Welcome back to the England Scotland channel. I'm Andrew and today we're going to be tying this, the hot orange octopus. This is a great fly for uh, log style fishing, whether it's um, rainbow trout or brown trout. Uh, I'll just quickly run you through the materials that we're going to need. So um, in the vise I've got an RX Freshwater 580, um, that's a wet fly hook. This is a size 8, uh, tightened size 10 and size 12, um, tightened size 8 predominantly for the video but this is a great size too. Uh, for the tail, we've got some glow bright and that's shade number five, um, hot orange. Some gold holographic tinsel and some gold medium wire um, for the rib. And we're gonna need um, orange cock hackle, black hen hackle and uh, optional uh, some jungle clock. And then the last thing that we're going to need uh, is some pheasant rump. These feathers are brilliant and they make all the difference in terms of the movement and the profile of the fly. So, let's get tying. I think these flies look more complicated than they actually are and they scare a lot of people away, but actually when you get the a handle on the, the process, uh, they're pretty straightforward. you just got to practice uh, a couple of the techniques and then you'll be fine. So first thing we're going to do is just run a base of thread down the body and attach the tail. Make sure you don't come past the bend of the hook. Now for the tail, all I've done is I've taken 8 to 10 strands of the Glowbrite floss and I've brushed it together with an old toothbrush. And I'm going to tie it past the bend and trim it, um, but you want at least the length of the body um, beyond the hook to begin with, I do trim mine a little bit shorter. And then what we're going to do is come up and touch and turn, just try and keep that on top. Um, all you need to do is just correct it with your index finger as you go up. But as long as you come up and touch and turns, you should manage to keep it nice and tidy. It's not, it's not totally critical that it stays on top but I like to try my very best. I'm going to come up till I'm about 3-4mm away for the eye and then I'm going to take those tag ends and trim them away. Tidy that up. On the way back down I'm going to tie in my wire. Nice and tight, all the way down to where the tail is. Now we also have got the opportunity I'm going to trim that tail. So like I say, not quite the full length of the hook. I like it to go maybe 3-4mm beyond the bend. That's a nice, a nice length for me. Next thing I attach is your tinsel. Now this is quite a wide tinsel as you can see, it's because I'm making a tinsel body. Gonna lay that against the side of the hook. Lay that against the side of the hook, bring your thread over, make sure it's right in against the tail, come up and touch and turns. Make sure that wire's covered, everything's nice and smooth. And stop here. I said this in my last lock style video, make sure you leave enough room um, for what you're going to do at the front of the eye, at the front of the fly, so there's a good 2-3 mm there. Um, next step, optional, um, but I like to do a wee bit of super glue, just along the top of the body for extra durability, and then I'm going to wind this tinsel up. You may get a wee lump, just smooth it with the back of your nail. And then you want to just overlap each turn very slightly to keep it all down. Get that wire back. Once you get the ear crossover with your thread, go 
bottoms to hold it in place and then trim it away. So from this point, next thing we're going to do is attach our hackle. Fairly decent size, what you're looking for, or what I tend to look for is barbs that are about the length of the shank of the hook. As you can see they're slightly longer but to be honest with the profile of this fly I'm kind of happy with that so I'm just going to lay that curved side away from you on the side of the hook. A few turns forward, a couple of turns on the hook and take away the stem. Get your hackle pliers. And grab it by the tip. And what you want to do is take a couple of straight turns right in front. One behind the other. And then we're going to take open turns. Three or four usually does it. And on your way up here and over we're going to catch in that wire so you've got your wire and you've got your cock hackle you want to cross over that stem lay your hackle pliers down and then just wind your wire through open turns in the opposite direction and that traps each turn of the stem in place don't worry if you catch a few fibres will take care of that shortly and when you get to this position, I'm going to come across a couple of fibres caught there. Across the wire, turn it out 90 degrees, 90 degrees, sorry, and then just wrap, wrap over it to secure it, and then bend it away. And here, open scissors, just run it into the stem. Take that, so it takes that away as so. well. It's probably the hardest step of the whole fly, to be honest. This um, for beginners, it's called palmering. Once you get that, you'll be able to tie a plethora of different patterns, so it's well worth practicing. Um, I'm going to get a toothbrush here because I've uh, not got my dubbing brush. I do have Velcro on the end of this, and I'm just going to brush those cock hackle fibers back a wee bit. Okay, next step is our pheasant rump. Now, I should have said this is dyed orange. Um, as you can see, it's a nice rusty colour. Complements the orange really well. What you'll find on the pheasant rump is there's lots of nice short feathers here in the middle. Um, they're really good for um, throats on flies or uh, loads, loads of different applications. Wet flies, spider patterns are great. And these longer feathers at the top is what you're looking for. So as you can see, nice long fibres on this. And what you want to do is take away all of this fluff because you don't need it. Um, what I would say is when you're tying this in, it does get dramatically thicker, this part of the stem. So take away the fluff. Just leave the, the longer fibres towards the top. What we're going to do is locate the tip and then stroke the rest of the fibres back. And this is what we're going to be tying in. Um, here's your tip here. So you're going to lay that again curved side away from you. And what I'm actually going to do is just trim that to a point. 
like you would a soft tackle. Lay that against the hook. A few nice tight turns over the top. Hold it into place. Now, in terms of how many turns, it's up to you to judge it really. But I try and use I try and use as much of the feather as I can before I start to feel like the stem's getting too thick. And all I'm doing is brushing the fibres back as I turn. Like so, one turn in front of the other. Come up underneath, cross my thread, and get a few locking wraps in place, bend it back couple of wraps onto the hook and then same again open scissors against the stem now what you want to do now is brush everything back and just tidy that up a wee bit wild at the moment um, so next step and um, we're getting pretty close to the end now got a black hen hackle again it's fairly fairly long not as long as the the um, pheasant rump but still it's the length of the hook anyway in terms of the, the barb size on this feather so we're going to take it by the tip again find the length that you like away so there's a couple of mil left you can see that so take the tip tie it in curve side away I'm going to do a couple of reasonably tight wraps on top I'm just going to fold it we go. Now this feather is long enough that you can uh, that I can hold it um, you don't if you can't do that then obviously use your hackle pliers before you get started just tease everything back so that the fe feathers naturally line back the way towards the bend of the hook and then it's same again one turn in front of the other gradually pulling everything back as you go and you should get two or three full turns out of that. I'm going to come up on this side, cross it with my thread, turn it out 90 degrees. One more. Now what I'm going to do is fold everything back And wind back over that stem. Get my scissors, open them up, push it against the stem. Not nearly there, and you can see the length of these fibres is going to create some fantastic movement on this fly when it's in the water. Now the last thing for us to do is um, jungle cock. You'll find when you buy a jungle cock cape that some are naturally split. Um, and that's a really good way to use these these feathers that otherwise um, would be not as usable in uh, salmon flies and other traditional patterns. I'm just going to encourage that to split a wee bit more. Make sure it's nice and deep down the feather. Like so. Now to tie it in, um, 
what I'm going to do is lay it on top and encourage it around the fly with my left hand. A couple of loose turns on top. Make sure it's sitting how you like. It's a nice angle for me, I like it to kind of point up the way a wee bit. Um, I'm going to fold this back. I'm going to wrap over the top it slightly. That'll help me form the head. And I'm going to put a whip finish in here just to secure everything. And I'm going to take these jungle cock tag end away. Make sure you don't cut the eye off. And then you've, I've left a wee bit on top there. I don't know if you can see that white bit. So what I'm going to do is just wind back over. And then we'll finish again. So it bends nice and tidy. And there we have it. That is my version of a hot orange octopus. Now if you want to get a nice sheen on the head, what I like to do is use um, a wee bit of super glue. This is um, Minuteman super glue from Gulf. And what I'll do is I'll super glue the head very carefully. And then I'll put a wee bit of UV resin just to finish off. Um, and then what you've got there is a very durable fish catching fly that will last for ages um, and you will enjoy using it. Hope you enjoyed tying it. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, every subscription counts and it helps us keep going. So um, we'd greatly appreciate your support. Um, so by all means do subscribe and I will see you next time. Cheers.